world can't seem to have enough crossovers. So Cadillac introduced a new baby one. This is the brand new XT4 and prices start at just under 35,000 Canadian dollars. That's it. Does that sound too good to be true? Let's find out. You can pick between three trim levels, luxury, premium luxury, and sport. But if you get the base luxury, you can have it with front wheel drive. And that's where the base price comes from. To get all wheel drive, you need to go up to about $38,000 for the base luxury or $43,000 Canadian dollars for the premium luxury or sport. I would totally recommend you go for the sport model because that's the only one that can get the $1,400 optional active dampers and they're totally worth it. The premium luxury we're driving today comes with all the bells and whistles and is priced just under $56,000, which doesn't make it very cheap, does it? Design-wise, the X-T4 is easily one of the prettiest crossovers out there. The closer you look at it, the more the details pop out and your appreciation for the design becomes huge. The interior at first glance also looks very nice, but then if you start looking closer and beyond the good materials used, you'll notice some finishing imperfections, as well as some design issues that look pretty nasty, like this needless stitch underneath the screen that looks pretty horrible. The good thing is that the fit between the panels is pretty good, so no rattles or squeaks are noticed when driving. Technology is good on board, the infotainment system has a nice high definition display, which supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and even the native system is pretty good to use, no more Cadillac Q. And you also get wireless charging under here, which is really cool. And check this out. Now here we are in the Cadillac XT4, and I need to reverse. But as you can see, we have balloons in the rear, so I can see anything. But here's where this rear view mirror comes into play, because you just flick the switch, and voila, you can see behind you. Pretty cool. The steering wheel, despite modern trends of being thick, is actually very thin. It's nice to hold on to though, it heats up pretty well, and the steering feels good. I have no complaints. It's well balanced, precise enough, not bad. The seats are very comfortable and have a basic massage function. They have very soft leather and the driving position is nice and upright for those who like it. Roominess is definitely a strong point here as the rear seats are roomy and good enough for tall people. You can even fit three kids in booster seats. However, this does take a toll on the trunk space as despite the incredibly optimistic rating of 637 liters, the trunk looks on the small side compared to other rivals. Under the hood, the X-T4 comes with a very clever 2.0 liter turbocharged engine, which is brand new and used here for the very first time. It features sliding cams, so they can on the fly change the profile of the valve openings. And it can also switch off two of the four cylinders under light loads, all this to save gas. The output is a respectable 237 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque and made it to an in-house built 9-speed automatic transmission, which is pretty quick and very smooth. I have to say, performance is pretty good. The one very interesting thing we need to talk about is the driving modes. You see, you can switch it between Tour, All-Wheel Drive, and Sport. The difference is that in Tour mode, it disengages the rear axle and becomes front-wheel drive. That's pretty cool, I must say. On the highway, I did a little test. I put it in two-wheel drive to see how much that affects fuel economy. And I was averaging 9.5 before that in all-wheel drive mode, and it dropped to about 8.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So, for that little difference and for the risk of then forgetting it in two-wheel drive and needing it later, I just left it in all-wheel drive. And uh, you know what? In all-wheel drive sport, it's actually very decent. In the city, fuel economy went up to 12.5 for then an average of 11.1 liters per 100 kilometers during our test. That's not bad, but with all those clever things going on, I was expecting a little bit better. The biggest problem, however, with the engine is the cold start. You might not notice that in Miami, in LA, and whatever, but here in Toronto, in winter, when you start it up and it's cold, it actually sounds very noisy and very rough. It really ruins the image and the whole, you know, luxury experience. 
it sounds like it's a motor straight out of I don't know a Rogue or something that's like really like a basic twenty thousand dollar crossover. It really I don't like it. It, it. it ruins the experience. Once everything warms up, it is much better, and then you can enjoy the plush ride. It handles pretty well. It does lean a bit because of the soft ride, but it does hold the road really well. The sport model with the active suspension in sport mode is a little bit better because it firms up more and it, it kind of feels more involving, but this car really doesn't appreciate hard driving. It's not built for that. So either way, it's fine. It is an excellent commuter car with characteristics everyone appreciates nowadays. Young people will like it because of its versatility in being a crossover. Older people are going to like it because it's easy to get in and out of. And everybody is going to like it because it's very luxurious and it looks really good. So basically, it's going to appeal to a very broad audience, especially because it's priced so well. So I do believe it's going to sell like hotcakes, just like any other crossover in the market. Overall score, 8.5 out of 10.